So here we'll get into the participant types and review the participation agreement. So mass highway participant types uh, are as diverse as the healthcare community is really. So there are several different participant uh, agreements in work, but for now we're going to focus just on the general agreement, which is for the basic and complex entities, um, other HIEs, and provider organizations. So here's the whole package. It includes documents that need to be reviewed and signed and understood by the authorized signatory. So an authorized signatory is like a, a CIO, CFO, president, business owner, anybody that can legally bind the organization. You've got policies and procedures, which outlines the terms and conditions of the AA, uh, the participation agreement that outlines the roles and responsibilities of each party, uh, and a service addendum. Now, the service addendum that explains uh, the specific services and any of the applicable terms of use or requirements for those services. So now we have a service addendum for direct messaging that folks will need to sign as they come on board. And once we roll out Query and Retrieve, there will be another service addendum. So as new services become available, you may need to sign additional addenda as we go through. Uh, documents 5 and 7 I'll get into on the next slide. And we do need a W-9 just to identify the organization and uh, it's used for invoicing. So I pulled these out specifically because um, it's a common misunderstanding as to how these documents need to get filled out. So Mass Highway participants uh, need to designate appropriate uh, access administrators to handle setup, which includes user verification and credentialing. Uh, they manage user access, uh, which includes termination or suspension. Um, and they're also in charge of training and educating your authorized users of the Mass Highway. So they basically manage uh, the Mass Highway account. So these three documents are required to designate the access administrators for your organization. The Delegate Administration Agreement details the responsibility of the role to the authorized signatory. That's the person that's going to assign the role. The Access Administrator designation form is used by that authorized signatory to assign the Access Administrators. Now we require to, uh, just because it's you know, best to have uh, someone on, uh, available if someone's away or someone leaves the organization. Now, access Administrators can be either IT, medical records staff, or office managers. It should be a trusted party, um, and you can nominate really whomever you feel is appropriate for the role. Now the Access administrator agreement outlines the role to the folks that you uh, designate as your access administrators. So that's the form that those folks need to sign. So we'll need two of those. Basically the big questions around um, the agreement are, you know, are about the Mass Highway altering the documents or signing documents that a participant requests. Um, and the answer is this, is this, it's always going to be no, we, we can't change the agreement or sign another agreement or a BAA. Um, I consider this a good thing on all fronts because I imagine such a negotiation would certainly add a ton of time to the process of getting you connected. You can absolutely review these documents with an attorney, uh, but you don't necessarily have to. I mean, they're written to be acceptable uh, to your authorized signatory. Um, I will say it's understandable uh, that it could be a bit nerve-wracking to go into an agreement, but again, the agreement package primarily outlines that the Mass Highway needs to be used in a safe uh, and ethical manner with the main purpose of protecting the patient and protecting that trust community. Uh, it basically says what you in the Mass Highway will do to help ensure that it's not uh, written to be a barrier. Uh, so here's everything that needs to be reviewed and signed. Again, we need uh, two of the Access Administrator Agreement forms. And here's what the, uh, what the signature page looks like, and I include this, again, because there's just been a little bit of confusion on it. So for the organization name, um, it's best if it, if it matches your W-9 or Articles of Corporation. Now, understandably, there are some circumstances where that, not, that might not be the case. Um, so just let us know on the agreement, uh, just because it, it will add time onto the verification process if, uh, if we're not clear of that up front. And that byline is actually where you sign, and of course we need your printed name, title, and uh, the date. So here's your, everything that you're submitting. It's uh, a total of seven forms, um, and on the W-9, this has come up a bit too, technically we do need a wet signature uh, in the W-9 mail to us. 
only if your organization is not already enrolled in the Massachusetts Management Accounting and Reporting System. If you are, a PDF scan copy of, uh, of your W-9 is totally fine. So next, when we get your completed package, we'll just verify your organization to make sure you are who you are and that you're an appropriate user of the Mass Highway. Um, and that usually takes about you know, two weeks or so. Um, and then your service manager will get in touch with you for onboarding.